Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here about good old Athena. It's been a while since I've shot one of my intros out here in the elements. It's kind of nice. In case you're new to my channel, this lovely looking boat is Athena. She's a 1987 Warrior 38 that I'm in the middle of refitting. The end goal is for my girlfriend Ava and I to be able to move aboard. Last week, Athena got moved out of the dry, cozy shed where she spent all summer while I finished an osmosis treatment, applied copper coat below the waterline, and finally got Sigma Dewar 550 on the cabin top. Being back outside, I am yet again at the mercy of the weather. It might look nice right now, but don't be fooled, winter is coming. If the weather forecast is correct, then I might be able to apply Kiwi Grip to the top of the cabin top on Saturday. But of course, there is a very strong chance that that weather forecast is just pure fiction. But I'm gonna hope for the best, cross my fingers, and prep for Kiwi Grip. Athena came with a pretty cool looking fiberglass dodger that sits right here on top of the cabin top. And for me to be able to figure out the nunskit pattern, I kinda need that on there, at least temporarily. This thing is not exactly super duper handy. It's surprisingly heavy and uh, this just kind of feels like a great way to get myself killed. Whew. It's gonna look a lot better with the windows mounted and a fresh coat of paint, but I still think it looks pretty freaking awesome. This thing still very much looks a little rough around the edges. For instance, these edges down here. There is a void in between the gel coat and the laminate all the way along this edge here. And I get it, that's a tough corner to get in when they laid this up in the mold. And it's not a big deal. I can easily fix that with some fairin compound. On either side of the Dodger, there's a big hole for an old speaker. And I don't think I want mounted speakers here in the cockpit. I think one of those Bluetooth doohickeys is gonna be just fine. And now is my chance to fix those holes before I paint the Dodger. So we'll get back to that later in this video. Last but certainly not least, I would say there is somewhere around a hundred little screw holes from all kinds of hardware. And I'll fix those later in this video too. For now, all that's important is the position of the Dodger on the cabin top. Like I mentioned, I care about the position of the Dodger on the cabin top because of the nun skit pattern, but also I want to go ahead and mark each of the holes where this gets through bolted to the cabin top so that I can go ahead and drill, fill, and drill those holes before it gets too cold for me to work with epoxy. After I painted the cabin top, the surface looked kind of rough. So a few weeks back, I sanded and polished most of the cabin top. There are still a few areas I need to deal with. The process I used is outlined in that video and uh, I'll include a link for that video somewhere up here. And uh, with that said, I better get to sanding. The reason I care so much about this surface being silky smooth is, well, for one, it'll look better, but also it's gonna be a lot easier to keep clean. And I think that's almost as important. It's a few days and a fair bit of sanding and polishing later. Let's uh, start with the good news. The entire cabin top is 100% prepped for Kiwi Grip, and I've got the materials and all the tools I need. I've got Kiwi Grip, and I've got the special roller that gives the Kiwi Grip its texture. I've got notched trowels, two different kinds. I've got plenty of masking tape. I've got some scalpels here because I might get a little bit artsy and put some Say Life logos in the nuns kit. Now for the not so good news. Over the last couple of days, I've been keeping a very close eye on the weather. The weather this weekend is supposed to be nice and sunny, but it's also supposed to be very humid. Humidity this time of year in Denmark is usually pretty high, so I'm not completely taken aback, but it's still very annoying. Don't mind these. These are just different layouts of the nuns kit. I can just get rid of those. 
What I wanted to show you is this thing. This is taken from KiwiGrip's website. This has a temperature over here and humidity down here. This green blob here is the area where it's okay to apply Kiwi Grip. Now it might take between four and 12 hours to dry, but inside of this green blob is where you need to be for between four to 12 hours. At least that's the way I'm reading the instructions, which seem to be pretty clear. But in case I'm wrong, please go ahead and correct me down below. Now, if you look over here, the red X's are readings taken from today from eight o'clock up until one o'clock where everything just kind of stagnated. And ever since one o'clock, we've been sitting around 75 to 80% humidity at around 16 degrees Celsius. The blue crosses represents the forecast for tomorrow. So between eight and 11, we're gonna be here. 11 to two, we're gonna be here. And then from two to eight, we're gonna be inside of the green blob. We all know how reliable forecasts can be, but even if that forecast comes true, it's still gonna be cutting it very, very close. Tonight, I'm gonna to do a little bit of an experiment. I'm gonna dump some tarps on top of the boat, crank the heat inside of the boat, and we'll see if I can raise the temperature in here a little bit and lower the humidity. But uh, it might very well turn out that I'm not gonna be able to get Kiwi Grip on the deck this weekend. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday morning. If I am to get Kiwi Grip on the cabin tap, today is the day. I've been using my little temperature and humidity logger right there to keep an eye on the conditions inside of the tent overnight. The surface temperature in here looks like it's around five degrees Celsius above ambient temperature. The temperature and the humidity around 15 centimeters above the cabin top has remained constant over the night around 15 degrees Celsius and 84% humidity. Let's go ahead and reference the chart of the green blob. 85% humidity is no good, but that's during the night. And if I can bump the temperature of the surface, that should get me into the green blob a little bit sooner and give me more time in here. So let's go ahead and get busy with some masking tape and just keep an eye on the forecast here to see if that looks like it's gonna come true. I'm having a little bit of a hard time deciding between these two layouts here. So I think I'm just gonna start with this one. And if I don't like it when it's up on the cabin top, I can just switch to this one. As far as the masking tape, this is 3M's 2090. This stuff is awesome. It's intended for outdoor use, but any kind of masking tape should do. There's not a lot of hardware up here on the cabin top I need to concern myself with when laying out the pattern for the nun skid. In fact, the only thing I need to worry about are the grab rails. I haven't fully decided if I want teak or stainless grab rails yet. These teak ones were just the only ones I could get my hands on with short notice and they'll serve for laying out the nunskit pattern. I'm not normally a big teak guy, but I gotta say this looks pretty spiffy. Anywho, on to the masking tape. I don't want nunskit underneath the grab rail. There's no point to that. So I need to figure out how wide of a reveal I wanna have here. I think I'm gonna go with somewhere around 10 centimeters. That looks right to me. I'm gonna use this box of matches taped to my measuring doohickey to mark those 10 centimeters. I'm using hardly any pressure here. I just need to be able to barely see the line. To create rounded over inside corners, I'm using this giant washer I found in my spare bin and a scalpel. Ta-da, a perfectly rounded over corner.
don't know about this. I should definitely have sprung for a stencil instead. This took just about forever. And also the edges are a little bit fuzzy. A stencil would certainly fix that. I don't know if it matters, but uh, we'll see later. Everything is masked off and ready for the next step, which is to key the surface. I'm gonna use that using 120 grit and this should not take long. And I'm gonna steer well clear of the taped edges here. I don't wanna mess those up. So those are gonna be sanded by hand afterwards. I've just checked and we're inside the green blob, so I better hurry up and get busy applying Kiwi Grip. The instructions recommend that you start with the smallest area on the boat or a piece of plywood because apparently your technique is gonna improve as you go along. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Apparently the more texture you want, the more Kiwi Grip you need to lay down. I think the instructions mentions using a three millimeter notch trowel or a six millimeter notch trowel. Another thing mentioned in the instructions is to let the roller lightly pass over the surface as a final pass to pop any tiny bubbles. I applied two layers of tape here because I knew I was going to have to remove the first layer when I'd done this tiny little area. It looks like the roller does make a little bit of a mess. So if you're gonna do this, make sure you put down plenty of masking tape. Fortunately, this stuff does clean up with just a little bit of water. Let's go for broke and do this piece here with my little logo on it. I've sharpened a bunch of matches to hopefully be able to pick up the masking tape. I don't know if this is gonna work, but uh, we'll see. If you want to do this logo thing on your boat, definitely go with a plastic stencil in one big piece because removing each of these little pieces of masking tape is the devil. Done. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a seven on the spiffiness scale. There is definitely a little bit of a learning curve with Kiwi Grip. Once I've got the Dodger painted and mounted, the grab rails and the other hardware up on deck, I'm sure we can bump that up to, let's say a 10. The reason I'm not completely satisfied with the job I did is because the texture varies quite a bit. For instance, in here, there's hardly any texture while out here, it's pretty aggressive. But this was the first large section I did. Over here on the last section I did, the texture is a lot more uniform. So if you're gonna apply Kiwi Grip, I would highly suggest you practice a little bit. Fortunately, it's not super noticeable. And one of the good things about Kiwi Grip is the fact that you can just give it a light sanding and apply more Kiwi Grip. So if the difference in texture drives me insane, well, then it's an easy fix. I'm gonna crank the heat inside of the boat, button her up and wait for the Kiwi Grip to cure enough that I can pull the tarp over the boat again. Good morning, guys. It is a beautiful Sunday morning. Let's head up and see what the temperature and humidity has been up to overnight. Look at that sunrise. That is beautiful. I'll start today out with a little bit of a bombshell. The forecast was wrong. We did way better than the forecast. When I left the boat yesterday, it was 26 degrees Celsius and the humidity was 55%. That is pretty much slap dab in the middle of the green blob. I was done applying Kiwi Group around 2.30. 
and it looks like I've gotten a solid, let's say five hours for sure inside of the green blob. That's awesome. Adding to that, the fact that there was a little bit of wind yesterday, which I'm sure helps the Kiwi Group cure faster, I would say we're good. And when I felt the Kiwi Group this morning, it feels rock solid. I'm sure there are a few backseat drivers out there that are gonna go, oh, you didn't need to waste time putting up that tent over the cabin top. You're a moron for doing that and I'm more clever than you. <laughs> to those few individuals, I'll say, Thank you, kind sir. I deeply appreciate your constructive feedback and I treasure it tremendously. Having said that, this is what the boat has looked like every morning this week. That is do not rain. The fact that I got super lucky with the weather yesterday was, well, just super lucky. Now, enough yammering on. Let me bring you guys outside and show you the Kiwi Grip in this beautiful light. I do have a few observations about Kiwi Grip that I would like to share, but first let me just go ahead and get this thing out of the way. First off, if you want to use Kiwi Grip, make sure to mask off a bigger area than you think you need. The rough texture of the roller does create a bit of splatter and uh, that's kind of annoying, so make sure to mask off a big area. When you remove the masking tape, the Kiwi Grip is probably still gonna be very wet on that masking tape. Make sure you've got somewhere to put that masking tape. Maybe just dump it over the side of the boat and pick it up, say, the day after. The instructions suggest that you should practice a little bit before starting. I would say that is a good idea to get a uniform texture, or at the very least, be prepared to go over it a second time if you're a little bit detail-oriented. If you're gonna use a notch trowel, maybe use a three or four millimeter one instead of a six millimeter one. If you use a six millimeter one, you're gonna get a lot of Kiwi grip down and that's gonna kind of overload the roller a little bit and make it more difficult. Again, that might just be a matter of practice, but yeah, for me, starting out, I wish I would have used a three or four millimeter one instead of the six. Other than that, all that's left to say is I really like working with Kiwi Grip. It's pretty easy and the result is spiffy. It's going to be interesting to see how it stands the test of time, but for that we're going to have to wait a few years. Before I get started working on the Dodger, I just want to take a quick second to wish Matteo in New Orleans a super duper happy 7th birthday on October 18. I hope you have an awesome day. The weather this weekend has been awesome, but like I mentioned earlier, winter is coming and soon it'll be too cold for me to work with epoxy. So it's important that I get all of the epoxy work out of the way before that happens. For instance, these holes here. I want the front of this to be nice and flush, but I also want the back to be nice and flush because I could be rummaging around in here with cold, wet fingers and I don't want to cut myself. First step is to grind a bevel on this so that I'll have something to tie the new laminate into the old. This is far from a 1 to 12 bevel, but this is not really a structural repair. This is just to get this hole plugged up, so this should be perfectly adequate. I need something to act as a backer here for the new laminate, and for that I've got a 3mm piece of MDF that I've wrapped in plastic and then wrapped in peel ply. This is a little bit of an experiment. Normally I would just have wrapped this in plastic, but sometimes that can get a little bit slippery. So just for the fun of it, I've decided to try with a little bit of peel ply on here. Now to secure this in place in here, I've carefully selected a very special rock. This is of course a very special and very expensive rock and not just a rock I've picked up in the uh, corner of the yard. There we go. Same procedure, different hole. Now let's get to cutting some fiberglass. This doesn't have to be pretty. I've gone ahead and made a little template here from a piece of plastic. And that's eight layers of 300 gram by actual. Right now, these are all the same size. And of course I need to make them smaller and smaller and smaller so that they will match the shape of my bevel. The classic way of doing that would be to take a piece of plastic and use that as a template by drawing smaller and smaller and smaller circles on that and then cutting out a circle cutting out a piece of fiberglass, cutting out a circle, 
cutting out a piece of fiberglass, but that is slow and cumbersome. So instead, I'm just gonna eyeball this. And there we go, a bunch of smaller and smaller patches of fiberglass. I've got a brush, I've got my fin roller, I've got the patches, and I've mixed up some epoxy. So now it's just a matter of getting the patches adhered to the dodger. And the cherry on top, a piece of peel ply. And again, different holes, same procedure, no more pesky speaker holes. I was planning on fixing the hundreds of holes in the Dodger today too, but my little countersinking bit for my drill has gone missing and I desperately need that to do that, so that's gonna have to wait until tomorrow. A quick little side note before I end this video. Last month I had a special offer on Patreon for some stickers for existing and new patrons. Ava's busy shipping out the stickers and we've noticed there are a lot of patrons that don't have a shipping address on their user profile. I've posted about this on Patreon a couple of times, I'm just mentioning it in the video to make sure that everybody here's it. So uh, if you log into Patreon and update your tier to make sure that the shipping info is there, then we'll get the stickers to you by the end of the month. We'll do another pass over the list then. And that is basically going to be it for this video. Uh, next weekend should be a lot of fun. If everything goes according to plan, we're going to fix these beams here. That should be interesting. So uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys again next weekend. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.